simplifying the steps to look at things like um, removing unnecessary forms and uh, removing um, not making uh, the customer be able to fill in quantities that are emanating from the phone. Maybe I would standardize the language to put in the phone and make sure that it was not that they were just in a kind of and then integration of the steps means that um, maybe there's a lot of uh, people or departments involved in doing these steps. And if we can uh, kind of coordinate better, uh, like for maybe two or three people have to do these kind of steps of integrating people within the process. So, uh, dividing the uh, responsibility is not clearly and not having people doing the same thing, but perhaps it's doing the same thing. So, this is like um, um, simplifying the key to maybe have that sort of enabling, enabling the option. Uh, 
certain amount of time that it takes for the process. So that's just the way it's going to be approved. And then, um, so this is the reading that you can put the time to the process. And this is the way it's going to be put in the process. And this is the way it's going to be put in the process. Um, these things are usually represented in, uh, in diagrams where they use the um, horizontal buttons. The horizontal buttons. They indicate the um, level of the process which is taking place. And they call the thin lines. So generally, the process goes from left to right, and there's a process of time to place the thing to different stages in the process, and the process, the different processes. So this thing that needs to be slower, it's not to be able to come back to that. And with the figure by four, so, the different uh, levels of the process in the So, the top level is the net organization level. In this case, uh, basically, we have one through the four and two processes of the stages and then delivered to the market. So it can change everything that goes on within the organization. Uh, that gets extended into uh, the functional relationship between two different phases of um, the value of things. So you have to turn the next thing, and that gets into the next thing. And then each of those get extended. And each of the process phases of what takes place within each of the stages. So you have different manufacturing and output training for each of the systems. Okay, um, so the organization will be the environment, and then the, at the medium level you have the value chain, which is the process and sub-processes. And at the lower level you have the activities and performance. And this is where you can detail uh, what goes on in terms of the roles of the employees, uh, the information systems involved and the activities involved. And uh, at this level, performance indicators are also in two bodies. So this is the part that goes directly to the process market. So you take it at this step. And the things that you want to be able to map are the, the roles of employees. And then the information systems. And then also the um the activities. Uh, so then the next uh, is a uh, process map. And it shows um, the process that we click on and you send it to the input about how it is going to go to the process level. And then you see it's the systems instead of the different aspects in the system. And you can see that these are the different stream lines. So you have some, um, and the horizontal rows, I mean, the horizontal uh, line is the rows. So you have the final two rows and the second two sets of rows. And the internal medicine system takes rows. These are different groups, not the new groups, but the system. And then the, the goal of uh, this process and division is to go from this old map to a new map. And then the, you want to be able to reduce lead time and reduce the amount of people that are involved. So you do reduce process time and also reduce the amount of people involved in the process. So you have to look for some kind of a form that you can possibly make improvements to this. Alright, so we'll talk about uh, reducing the number of people without reducing quality. 
based on uh, fundamental principles for a good design process. So, when we talk about the front page, the most critical process, and this is like part of the criteria of education. This is critical, and it has potential, and we make inclusions, and this is the So, when you've identified these, ideal processes to uh, improve. When you start with uh, looking at this and reducing the number of process steps um, by eliminating a method from it, you try to transform the processes into events. You minimize the distance, you have a distance, um, so that people don't have to um, um, you say it's a minimal side of difference from the time you up and down the red flag of the race and then the people involved to be as much as possible. And then make the uh, practices and events parallel as possible and reduce the waiting time. So these are just kind of rules of thumb for how it's principles for how you can uh, redefine And uh, what the book does is actually um, go through the example. So this is just a quick word that I'm going to ask the question. And what has changed from before and from after is that in the before picture, we had um, a registration to research students to see them. Uh, what I would challenge you to do at this point is to uh, 
think about your, regi- your registration for six. And to think of my kind of boy process about what's going to be doing for six. And to look for a boy shop. And think about the place. I can only find the place in which to think of six. And to look at that place. What if I remain in the past? I can't find it. Maybe we can take that last time to come in and get this to the top. It's no step.
Thank you. 